gracefully, almost weightless, they glide across the oceans, resembling birds in the sky rather than fish in the sea. Very little is known about these gentle giants, but what we do know allows us to appreciate their grace, uniqueness and beauty, and the lengths to which we should go to protect them. Sharks have been swimming our oceans for over 400 million years, but manta rays have only appeared 5 million years ago. These enchanting marine species belong to the group of cartilaginous fish in the family of mobulid rays. Sighted across the globe, manta and mobula rays most commonly inhabit the tropics. Others are circumglobal, traveling vast distances in the deep blue of the ocean. Both manta and mobula rays have diamond-shaped bodies and large wing-like fins that gracefully propel them through the water. However, various species have many differentiating physical characteristics. Typically, mantas are found with black and white backs and white undersides with a unique arrangement of spots on their stomachs, enabling individual identification. However, they can also be entirely black in color. No other species of shark or ray has been known to differ to this extent, and it is unclear as to why mantas do. Depending on the species, their mighty wingspans can reach widths of 5 to an incredible 9 meters. However, the uniqueness of manta and mobula rays doesn't stop at their outward appearance. Mantas have the largest brain of any shark or ray, with a brain-to-body mass ratio comparable to a similarly sized mammal. Moreover, the largest regions of their brains, including the cerebrum, are responsible for higher functions, including the increase in sensory functions. This accounts for a higher level of intelligence and makes them highly sociable creatures. Because of this, mantas are a favorite among divers, often approaching with curiosity and performing rolls and loops, or just hovering close by. Manta rays and some species of mobula rays feed on zooplankton, small organisms found drifting through the water, while other mobula species feed on small forage fish. Their feeding behaviors can be an awesome spectacle to observe. A manta's mouth is in front of its head, whereas the mobulas is underneath. All mobulids possess interesting lobes extending from the front of their mouths. These fascinating lobes are used to scoop the zooplankton into their mouths, rolling neatly back when finished. This is a highly sophisticated technique that maximizes feeding efficiency. Both mantas and mobulas can be observed feeding at the water's surface, in dense food areas, or using their mouths to vacuum the seabed floor. Each of these diverse methods requires specialized gill rakers, allowing the rays to filter tiny particles from the water before guiding them to the throat to be swallowed. Mantas and mobula rays have been known to gather in large groups to feed, creating an amazing spectacle as trains of rays loop and twirl in the water column. Manta rays also gather at cleaning stations, where small fish called cleaneras remove parasites from their bodies. Questions still remain about mobulid ray reproduction. Some reports suggest that female sexual maturity is reflected by her size rather than her age. In fact, females have been known to reach up to 10 years of age before they first mate. Pup gestation can take between 9 and 12 months and she will give birth to one solitary live pup, a miniature version of herself. A healthy female will continue to produce one pup every 2 to 5 years during her lifespan, which is assumed to be 40 years. Depending on the species, pups can weigh up to 25 pounds and stretch to 1.5 meters in length. Born with their fins curled, when the pup is born, it spreads its fins and intuitively begins to swim. Little evidence exists to suggest that the mother will stay with her pup. 
Instead, it is thought that they will fend for themselves in shallow waters before taking to the depths of the ocean. Global manta and mobula ray populations are relatively unknown, and many questions remain unanswered regarding their behavior and biology. What we do know, however, is that some unique characteristics make manta and mobula rays extremely vulnerable to overfishing, regional depletion, and local extinction. Late sexual maturity, slow reproduction, and specific regional populations that may be genetically different all increase this threat. Manta and mobula rays are fished for their meat, skin, and increasingly for their gill rakers, which are sold as a purported treatment for a wide variety of ailments. A mature oceanic manta ray can yield up to seven kilos of dried gills, retailing for as much as 500 US dollars per kilo, many times the nominal value of the meat. As a result, the past decade has seen significant declines in both number and size of manta rays in fishery sites in Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Mozambique, India and Thailand. In contrast, a single live manta ray can be worth up to one million US dollars over its lifetime in tourism revenue. At present, there are few conservation measures for manta and mobula rays, but you can help protect these magnificent creatures of the deep by saying no to products made from their body parts. Wild Aid and Shark Savers run an international campaign to protect manta and mobula rays. Please join us. When the buying stops, the killing can too.